Hey guys, Lauren Oliver here for a episode 12 of Ask Lauren Oliver, where I answer all of your burning questions about my books and about publishing and about pretty much anything you want to ask me. I hope you guys had a great Labor Day and you're ready to get back to work now that the summer's over. I certainly am. And I'll start by diving right into the questions. From Twitter, this is at dbartoluch. Where did you get the inspiration for Alex in Delirium? I've heard that question a lot and I wish I could say that I actually, that Alex was a real person and I was just, this was my memories of my first love. Unfortunately, Alex is just a guy I made up in my head. Uh, it would be awesome if he was real though. I did draw actually inspiration from um, thinking about the first summer when I was about Lena's age when I fell in love for the first time. Not necessarily my first boyfriend, but really my first kind of epic romance. And I definitely drew on some of those feelings and characteristics when I was thinking about Alex and also Alex and Lena's relationship. At Leaticia19 from Twitter, when did you know you wanted to become a writer? Was it easy to admit or did you fight it? That's a complicated question actually because I've always written, that's always been a part of my life, but I'm not sure that I always wanted to be a writer. It was just something I did. It was part of my daily life, like brushing my teeth. At, w at what point I really said, this is the only career I'm gonna be able to have. For a long time, I didn't even think I it was possible really for me to just have a career writing. Um, even after I sold Before I Fall, I wasn't sure that it wasn't gonna be the only book that I ever had published. So I think it was more just a question of knowing that this would always be a part of my life. And in terms of knowing that it was hard to admit, I mean, it is scary when I made the decision to be a full-time writer, that was very, very scary. But I figured I should at least try it because if not, I would regret it for the rest of my life. At Paulina Sand from Twitter says, do you like Russian writers and poets? Well, I love a lot of Russian writers um, like Nabokov and Chekhov and um, some of the greats are obviously are obviously Russian writers. I don't actually know that many Russian poets. If you have any recommendations for some that I should be reading, please send them along my way. At Muffin Butt from Tumblr, awesome, awesome name, asks me about the recent controversy on Goodreads, um, most recently surrounding learning to love, um, but basically about how I feel about people rating and reviewing books before they read them, especially if the reviews are negative. As far as I understand, I haven't, I'm ambivalent about this. Uh, as far as I understand, you know, sometimes people rate books as a way of identifying whether or not they're interested in the concept or whether the books appeal to them. I think it does become a really big problem when those kind of reviews are become impactful on a large scale, when people kind of use it as an excuse to just criticize or, um, or basically condemn, censure somebody else's work um, just for the sake of censoring, censuring them. Um, and, uh, and then I think it can be incredibly hurtful, obviously, and, and also not that useful to the reading community um, because people can be very influenced by, by the things that they see, even if the things they see are inaccurate. For example, my new book, Panic, is rated on Goodreads as dystopian, but it's not dystopian, it's realistic, but I can't change it actually, it's the user reviews. So whether that will influence some people to pick it up or, but then they'll be disappointed or whether some people won't pick it up because they don't want to read dystopian, but otherwise they would have and they liked it. You know, I mean, it's, it's really stressful and scary, but I definitely think that in general, the anonymity of online encourages people to be meaner than they would in real life. Criticism is a part of life, and of course we have to we have to be willing to accept that. But there's a difference between being critical and just being mean, or you know, as as in the case of kind of being bullied by by anonymous groups of people. Again, I'm kind of ambivalent about the Goodreads system. So like everything else, I think there are many wonderful things about it, but it can be easily abused. So those are my thoughts for the day, for the Wednesday after Labor Day, uh, fall first fall thoughts and. Um, I hope you guys are having a great start to your autumn, and I will see you here next week. Don't forget to send me your questions on Tumblr, on Twitter, and of course, follow me on YouTube so you can see all of my you know, thoughts and answers to your questions. Mwah!